Hollywood, California, we present Gene Hersholt in his Christmas Dr. Christian story. Brought to you by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other famous Vaseline specialties. If your hair seems dry and lifeless, unmanageable no matter how much you brush and comb it, remember this. Dry hair is apt to mean that your scalp is dry, too. Overheated rooms, too much sun, soap, and water all tend to dry out your scalp. Take away the natural oils that nature provided to keep your hair good-looking and manageable. Check dry scalp at once. Begin using Vaseline hair tonic these two ways. Use a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic each morning while grooming your hair. See how much easier it is to comb without any dousing and without that slick-down look. Then massage plenty of Vaseline hair tonic on your scalp before each shampoo to stimulate the circulation, offset dryness. Vaseline hair tonic is different. It contains no drying ingredients and absolutely will not dry the hair. And it is economical. A few drops do the trick. Stop in at your druggist for a convenient shaker top bottle of Vaseline hair tonic and keep your hair at its best all year round. Vaseline hair tonic comes in 40 and 70 cent sizes. Featured in tonight's program is Miss Gloria Holden as the young nurse Goldie. But we're not going to tell you any more of the story because we want our star, Jean Hersholt, as Dr. Christian, to take up the drama from this point. There's no place in the world where you get a greater feeling of excitement over Christmas than in the children's ward of a hospital. Those little tots lying there day after day and night after night have something real to look forward to at last. The Christmas party, candy cake, ice cream, and a Christmas tree with a present for each and every one. Well, it was a few days before Christmas, and I was hurrying along the corridor of the Center City Hospital on my way out, when I heard somebody call me. Dr. Christian? Oh, Dr. Christian? Are you calling me, nurse? Uh, yes, doctor. Can you spare a minute? What's up? Anything wrong? Oh, no. You mean you were running after me just on my own account? Well, of course not. I mean, I would, but I... I <laughs> thought not. <laughs> No such luck. Oh. It's the young fellows like Dr. Bradford that nurses run after, isn't it? Well, I, um... Uh, uh... Lushing, eh? Oh, I'm sorry. I won't tease you anymore. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's about our Christmas party, Dr. Christian. What Christmas party? The one in the children's ward. You're coming, aren't you? Oh, try to keep me away. Oh, I'm so glad. Tony wants you especially. Well, tell Tony I'll be there with sleigh bells mm -hmm. on. What time is the big event? Ten o'clock Christmas morning. It'll be over by noon. How's Tony today? Oh... I'm worried about him, Doctor. Yes, I know. But it'll be a miracle if you pull him through. You think the excitement of Christmas No. Might... No, it won't hurt him. It may even help. Oh. He's counting on it, isn't he? Oh, I should say he is. Do you know what he wants most? What? An elephant. An elephant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a real one, of course. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> a toy elephant made of plush. And I'm supposed to see that he gets it? No, no, I'm getting that for him. On your munificent salary of $70 a month? No. Hmm, and are you buying all the toys for the rest of the war, too? Oh, no, not many, just a few. Miss Golden, not only is your name Golden, but I believe your heart's Golden, too. <laughs> oh, uh, say, Dr. Bradford, Dr. Bradford, just a minute. Uh, well, thank you, Doctor. I'll be running back to the oh, board now. Oh, blushing again, eh? It's that bad, is it? Yes, Doctor. I just wanted to tell you that's a darn good job you're doing in today's boy. Well, thank you, but you're giving me too much credit. As a matter of fact, most of the good results in the Davis case are due to the care Miss Golden has given the youngster. Miss Golden? Miss Golden. Oh, yes, yes, you mean the young nurse in the ward, hmm? Yes, the one they call Goldie. Why, her work in this case has been fully as important as mine. Mm, so? Mm, she's a wonderful nurse. Yes, we've got some good nurses here. Not like Goldie. I mean Miss Golden. Why, she's, she's exceptional. Now, do you know it's a funny thing? But I just got through bowling her out. Bowling her out? Yes, for spending all her money on Christmas presents for the ward patients. She's got no business doing that. Now, you ought to knock some sense into her, Doctor. Well, she hasn't got much money to spend. Of course she hasn't. Well, if I get a chance, Doctor, I'll talk to her tomorrow. Now, she's gone out and bought a plush elephant for Tony, and Lord knows <laughs> what else she's bought for the rest of them. Well, she's crazy about children. She spoils them. Goes back in there after she's off duty and sees that they're all tucked in for the night. You know, that girl will make a great little mother and wife someday. You bet your life she will. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose you're right. 
And now, if you, you'll excuse me, Doctor, I, I'm wanted in surgery. Well, good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Stop in and see her sometime this afternoon. And you better drop by Carter's. Oh, and I hate to tell you, but old man Thomas is bad again. That means another trip out the back mountain road. Judy, do you know there's the finest selection of Christmas tree in the world along that back mountain road? Selection of what? Christmas trees. Oh. Don't you know it's almost Christmas? Why, yes, of course, but... Oh, get into the spirit of it, then. It's a wonderful time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, but I was telling you about your cases, Doctor. And I was telling you about Christmas... Why, on the day before Christmas, my father used to come home with a big, fat goose dressed and drawn and dangling its long neck around its bootstraps. <laughs> and the stuffing my mother used to make for that goose. Judy, it was something. Uh-huh. Chopped onions, fried in butter, and added to mashed potatoes. Mmm. <laughs> I can smell it cooking now. Uh-huh. Why, our kitchen on the day before Christmas was heaven. You could smell citron and spice and ginger and lemon... And onions. <clears throat> we were an onion-minded family, Judy. Uh-huh. Uh, don't you want to hear about your patients? Oh, yes, of course I do. But first of all, I want you to go shopping for me. Shopping? I want the biggest Christmas tree you can buy for the children's ward. Oh, all right. But I was telling you that... And uh, I wanted to get a lot of stuff to hang on it. You know, uh, red bowls and green bowls and silver bowls mm-hmm. and gold bowls. And, and, and uh, uh, get that little nurse Goldie to help you trim it. And uh, you might ask Dr. Bradford to give you a hand, too. What are you up to? Oh, he's a fine young fellow. I know that, but... And he's a first-class surgeon, too. He'll get along if he marries the right girl. Well, he's not going to marry anybody, is he? Well, no, <laughs> you never know. Uh, but as I was saying, get little Goldie to help you. Is he and... in love with Goldie? Well, if he isn't, he ought to be. So that's what you're up to, is it? Hmm? Oh, they'll make a swell team. Oh, but he can't marry anybody. No, why not? Well, he's already supporting a mother and half a dozen brothers and sisters. Oh, that won't stop him. Well, that's what stopped him up to now. Did you ever hear that old saying, where well, there's a will, there's a way? Uh, I wouldn't want to buck Mrs. Bradford. Not me. Oh, I'll bet my last dollar on that little Goldie winning over Mrs. Bradford or anybody else. Huh? You know, Judy, he's got a way with her, and I only wish... Well... You wish what? I wish I was 20 years younger myself. the table set, Sally? Yes, Mom. I won't put the steak in till he gets here. I'm awful hungry. Well, you can wait till your brother gets home, I guess. But he's always late. Well, what if he is? He's got a right to be late. He has to work late at the hospital. There he is now. Gee, is supper ready? I'm starved. Oh, that's you, Timmy. Yeah, when do we eat? When Danny gets here. Oh, gee, why do we always have to wait for him? That's what I want to know. He's Mama's pet, that's why. No such thing. But if he works hard all day over at that hospital, it's the least we can do to wait till he gets here before sitting down to eat. But you haven't even put the steak in yet. And I want some dinner before I do my homework. Well, he'll be along any minute now. I don't see why. Just because he's a doctor, you make such a fuss about him. He's the oldest, that's why. He's the head of the family. Now that your father's gone, he's the breadwinner. What bread does he win? He doesn't even win crumbs. But he will. Gee, Bill and I made more in a month with the hay crop and selling the heifer than he's made in his doctrine in a year. Mm. He'll make plenty before he's through. We've got some rights. We work hard after school. Now, you stop your talking and go wash your hands for supper. You can't come to the table with nails like that. Oh, all right. And that goes for you, too, Bill. And brush your hair. I suppose if Danny don't get home by 9 o'clock, we'll still be waiting. It ain't fair. We get home early and we got to sit around while Danny feels like coming home. But you do like him best, don't you, Mom? Oh, of course not. What a silly thing to say. Well, you do anyhow. I know you do, and we all know it. Well, I don't like any of your best. I like you all. But uh, if you mean I'm proud of Danny because of the way he's worked to get his degree, why, yes, I am proud of him. My father was a doctor, and Danny's carrying on the family tradition. I bet you'll be mad when he gets married. Don't ever talk such nonsense as that. Why, what's nonsense about it? You'll get married someday. Someday, yes. But not for years and years. How do you know? Because he gave his word that he wouldn't. His sacred word to your father. 
when he lay dying. Oh, he was only a little boy when he promised Doesn't that. Doesn't make any difference. It was an oath. He's bound to keep an oath. Oh, Mom, you don't really think he'd stick to that. But gosh, if he fell in love... He him... can't fall in love. Not till all of you have grown up and gotten married. That's what he swore to your father before he died. That's what he promised. our Dr. Christian story in just a moment. So many people have head colds at this time of year. We think you'll be interested in hearing how one of our Dr. Christian friends helps relieve that stuffy feeling. One of the most uncomfortable things about a head cold is that feeling of congestion. In our family, as soon as we feel a cold coming on, we put a little Vaseline jelly up each nostril to help relieve that dry, stuffy feeling. It lubricates the nasal passages, soothes the inflamed membranes, and makes breathing easier. I rub a little Vaseline jelly under the nose, too, when the skin gets sore and irritated from too much blowing. I've told dozens of my friends how much Vaseline jelly helps, and they've all been so enthusiastic that I'm very glad to be able to tell you about it, too. One of the important things in the relief of the discomfort of a head cold is to protect and lubricate the nasal passages. And that's what Vaseline jelly does. It forms a thin, protective coating. It is soothing, too, and it's so pure and safe, you can use it freely. Don't be without a jar or tube of Vaseline jelly in your medicine cabinet. It costs only ten cents at any drugstore. For the next scene in our story of Dr. Bradford and the young nurse Goldie, we take you back to the children's ward in the Center City Hospital. It is Christmas Eve, and poor little Tony is no better. Goldie, will you say it now? Mm -hmm. Go on. It was the night before Christmas. And it is the night before Christmas, too, ain't it? Yes, dear, it certainly is. And all through the house... Not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Do you believe in Santa Claus, Goldie? Why, of course I do, Tony. Don't you? I don't know. Maybe. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care... It ought to say, hung by the beds with care. Oh, Tony. In hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Well, say all these stockings hung up here look like Christmas. It will be Christmas tomorrow, Dr. Christian. No. And I'm going to get a baby doll to close her eyes. <laughs> Ain't I, Goldie? Mm-hmm. What? You still here, Miss Golden? Well, she's saying a piece for me. She is, eh? Well, how about me saying a piece for you tonight, Tony? Oh, I want Goldie. Well, you can't have her. He's got a date, Christmas Eve date. Why? Why, how do you know? Oh, I know lots of things. That's one of the pleasures of growing older. You know so much. But, but I wanted to stay. Well, you'll have to put up with me instead. Good night, Miss Golden. Uh, good night, Doctor. Only I... Say good night to her, Tony. Good night, Goldie. Good night, darling. And try to sleep if you can, so Santa Claus can get his work done. I'll try. <laughs> oh, Miss Golden. Uh, just a minute. Yes, Doctor. Tell Dr. Bradford I think he's a darn lucky fellow. Why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night. She's awful happy about something, ain't she? Did you notice that, too? Yes. I wonder what it is. Maybe it's a Christmas present she's going to get. Do you know what it is? I think I do. Could you... I mean... Would you... Can I know... Well, how good are you at keeping a secret? Awful good. Ah, then I guess I can tell you. Miss Golden's Christmas present is going to be Dr. Bradford. How can he be a Christmas present? Well, I don't know, but he will be. Oh, you mean, you mean she, she likes him? I think she does. And does he like her? Well, he couldn't help it, could he? Oh, gee, that's great. I'm glad you feel that way about it. I was afraid you wouldn't think anybody was good enough for her. Dr. Bradford is. He's all right. <laughs> yes, he's all right. Thanks for telling me. It makes everything a lot easier. What do you mean by that? Well, you see, she ain't got nobody to look after, and, and I hated to, to go away and leave her all alone like that. Leave her? Look here, I won't have you talking like this. Oh, 
I don't mind going. Not such an awful lot. I've had a swell time here in this hospital. So it's been swell here, has it, Tony? Too bad. It's a swell hospital, and everybody's been swell to me. Oh, my Goldie, she's been the swellest of all. It's you who are swell, Tony. Now, how about time to get a little rest? All right, Doctor. Will you stay here? I want to be sure to, to last until tomorrow. <laughs> of course you will. I'd like to. On a can, I might get an elephant. Is that what you want most? Yes. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you got the elephant. Honest? Oh, gee. gee. If I did, I wouldn't have nothing left to wish for. Not a thing. Nothing. Nothing in this whole world. What took you so long, Goldie? Oh, I just dropped oh, in. Oh, it doesn't the... matter as long as you're here. Dr. Christian's staying with Tony tonight. Well, there's nobody like him. No, there isn't. But, Danny, when did you tell him about us? Uh, well, I didn't. What? But he knows. He said, tell Dr. Bradford I, I think he's a darn lucky fellow. <laughs> <laughs> you bet I'm lucky. Uh, well, everybody's going to know about us after tonight. After tonight? Yep, as soon as I take you out to meet my mother. Once I've told her and the kids that we're going to get married, we'll tell the whole world. Oh, Danny, hadn't we better wait a while? Or... What for? Oh, I don't know, but I'm afraid maybe... Oh, don't be afraid, Goldie. We won't have much money, but what do we care? <laughs> Two can live as cheaply as one. Mm -hmm. Besides, I'll have a wife who can help me with my work, run my office, and look after my patients, and go out on cases with me. Mm -hmm. Say, won't that be swell to do everything together forevermore? Oh, darling. Oh, let's darling. get married tomorrow so I can give you to Mother for a Christmas present. Give me to your mother? Yes. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mother. Here's a new daughter for you, all tied up in cellophane with a red satin bow. <laughs> How do you like her? <laughs> well, maybe she won't like me. Oh, to see you is to like you, Goldie. You're... You're an awful peach. There's Danny now. Go let him in. It's about time. I could eat a bull. I'll go put the steak on the broiler. And I'll open the door. Hurry up. It's cold out there. Oh, I... Well, Sally, look what I brought oh. home. Oh. Hello. My name's Joan Golden, and I know you're Sally. Mm -hmm. I'm Sally. <laughs> and that guy over there with the unbrushed hair is my kid brother, Bill. Hello. And that Hello. other one with the smudge on his nose there is Tim. Hiya, Tim. Hiya. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We're hungry. Mom wouldn't give us dinner till you got here. Well, we've got a dinner waiting for us, Goldie. What do you know about that? Say, well. Jan, I thought you said her name was Joan. Everybody calls her Goldie. You know Goldilocks in the fairy story? Mm -hmm. This is the girl. <laughs> well, I like Goldie better than Joan. That's what all her patients call her. Oh, are you a nurse? Mm -hmm. You're really too pretty to be a nurse, you oh, know. Oh, mm, <laughs> that's what I think. I want to be a nurse, too, someday. Where's Mother? Out in the kitchen. We'll go out and rob her out. Come on, come on Goldie. Uh, no, no, I'll wait here, Danny. Yes, Goldie and I want to talk. Won't you take off your hat and coat? All right. Here, Daddy. I'll take them for you. Hey, Mother. Mother. Oh, Danny, you got <laughs> here at last. <laughs> yep, I got here. Say, you didn't have to keep dinner waiting all this time. Uh, I guess you can wait for the great Dr. Bradford. Well, I made up my mind I'd get home on Christmas Eve if I had a crawl on my hands and knees. There, the steak's on at last. The oven's red hot, so it won't take long to boil. My, I'm glad you got here tonight. They keep you so busy over at that hospital. Yes, I got here. And, Mother, what do you think? I brought a Christmas present for you. Oh, now don't tell me what it is. I, I never like to know till Christmas morning. But this present won't keep that oh, long. Of course it will. Move out of the way, Danny, till I lift out the biscuits. There. Now I want my Christmas present on Christmas Day, not a minute before. Well, I tell you, this one won't keep. It's a girl. Uh, what'd you say? A girl. No, not a girl. The girl. I don't believe I understand. I know you don't. Well, maybe I oughtn't to spring it on you this way, but I couldn't wait. A girl? Here? Yes. It's big news, Mother, the biggest in the world. I've found her, the future Mrs. Bradford. And that's, that's the Christmas present, your new daughter. Danny, you... You don't mean this. Why, of course I mean it. And she's in there waiting to meet you. She's all alone in the world, and she's always wanted a mother, and now... You can't do it, Danny. You can't marry anybody. 
Why not, I'd like to know. Have you forgotten your oath? My oath? To your father when he lay dying? Danny, you can't forget that. Oh, that wasn't serious. That was a promise extracted by a sick man who, who didn't know what he was saying. From a small, scared boy. And when I say scared, I mean scared. It was an oath, though. Oh, get out. Nobody on earth would give it a second thought. You swore you'd never marry till your brothers and sisters were married first. You don't think I'll let that stand in my way? It was a sacred oath. Oh, Mother, forget it. Come on out of the kitchen and meet Goldie. You're going to love her. Why, you're going to... No. Why, Mother, you've got no, to... No, Danny, I won't meet her. I won't speak to her. I won't even look at her. Oh, may I come in? I, I'm Goldie, Mrs. Bradford. Wait. You can't marry her, Danny. You swore to your father on his deathbed you'd never marry till your younger brothers and sisters were married. You can't marry this girl or anybody else. Why, Danny, Danny, is this true? Well, there was some crazy deathbed promise extracted from me when I was only a little shaver, but... An oath is an oath. I, uh, perhaps I'd better go, Danny. Uh, no, no, you can't. I, I won't let you. Yes, Danny, I'm going. You and your mother can sort of talk this over. I, I'd rather not stay just now, really. Goldie, wait. Please wait. I, I've got to talk to you. Oh, it's no use, Danny. Not with your mother feeling like that. I, I'd never marry you with her feeling like that. But it doesn't make sense. What has how she feels got to do with us? Well, I couldn't do it, that's all. She'd hate me. Why, well, she hates me now. Oh, Goldie, how can you say that? Because I know it. She doesn't want you to marry anybody. Well, she needn't be afraid. I don't want to marry you. I wouldn't marry you now. I, I won't ever marry anybody. <laughs> Yes? Tony is very low. Oh, I'll come right in. What time is it? Quarter of twelve. Hello, Tony. How are you doing? I thought I'd come right in and kind of put you to bed because you need a good night's rest. I, I can't get my breath. Oh, we'll fix you up in no time, Sonny. I guess I won't get that elephant now. Sure you'll get it. Give him another half dose. Yes, Doctor. That's right. Steady, Tony, my boy. This really doesn't hurt, you know. There. Now keep as still as you can for a minute. I, I feel a little better, I think. Good. I'm a Goldie. I'm afraid she's not here. I'm afraid she's still out. I want her. I wish she'd come. Please get Goldie. Well, we'll see if Miss Golden has come back yet. Yes, I'll go see. Maybe, maybe I'll be all right again. You bet you'll be all right. Then I can go to the Christmas party. I can open my stocking. Is it full yet? I'll see. Yes, sir. Full to the brim. Could I have it here on the bed beside me? You certainly can. Oh, it weighs a whole ton. I can hardly lift it. Here it is. Thanks. Oh, oh, it's busting full, ain't it? Busting? I never had no, no stocking full like that before. Would you like me to open it for you? No. Just let it lay there. Dr. Christian, do you happen to know whether Miss Golden is back? I, I mean, did she stop in here? My no, she isn't in here. Well, I thought maybe that. She isn't here, but perhaps you'd better stay. All right, Doctor. I found Miss Golden in her room. She... Oh, good evening, Dr. Bradley. Is she coming? I don't want... Yes, Doctor. She seems pretty upset over something. How's Tony? Take his pulse. Quiet. It's barely perceptible. Poor little chap. Oh, oh, Dr. Christian. Tony's not... not... No. No, but he's a very sick boy. Oh. Miss Golden. You. What have you got there? His present, the, the elephant. Unwrap it. His pulse is a little stronger now. Goldie. Oh, I'm Goldie. I'm here, darling. Goldie's right here beside you. That's good. What? What's that? You mean those bells? It's Christmas, Tommy. Christmas? Mm -hmm. is, is Christmas here already? Yes, darling. And, and here's your Christmas present. An, an elephant? Yes, a plush one. Will you put it here? Sure, sure. There. Now, will that be comfortable? Yes, fine, thanks. 
Dr. Bradford. Yes, Tony? I... I, I you'd better try to rest, Tony. Let him talk. <laughs> it won't do any harm. I'm glad you're going to be Goldie's Christmas present, Dr. Bradford. Well, I... I don't believe Goldie wants me for Christmas, Tony. Or any other time, for that matter. Sure she does. Don't you, Goldie? Well, I... I, uh... Answer him, Goldie. Yes, Tony. I do want him. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Tony. Merry Christmas, Tony. Merry Christmas. And so the curtain falls on Gene Herschel's Christmas story. But he'll be out here in just a moment to tell us about next week's program. Remember, next time a cold makes your head feel stuffy, lubricate the nasal passages with soothing Vaseline jelly. It's so highly refined, it's pure enough to eat. In fact, many people take a teaspoonful of Vaseline jelly whenever their throats feel dry or raspy. When you buy Vaseline jelly, be sure to look for the trademark Vaseline. It's your assurance of quality and purity. You can buy soothing Vaseline jelly at any drugstore for just 10 cents. You'll find it handy for dozens of everyday skin problems of the whole family. Get to know the Vaseline specialties, too. Vaseline carbolated jelly, Vaseline borated jelly, Vaseline camphor ice, and Vaseline lip ice. Your druggist will be glad to tell you about their special benefits. The artists you heard tonight were Rosemary DeCamp as Judy, Gloria Holden as Goldie, Julian Madison as young Dr. Bradford, Myra Marsh as Miss Thomas, the older nurse, Walter Tetley, who's gathering laurels steadily in Hollywood these days, as Tony. Velma Berg as Sally, Jane Morgan as the mother, Mrs. Bradford, and Joan Taylor, Jerry Tucker, and Eric Burtis as the Bradford children. Now our star, Jean Hersholt, as Dr. Christian. <laughs> Tell us the end of the story, Dr. Christian. Did Goldie and Dr. Bradford get married, and did Tony get well? And the answer is yes to both questions. On Christmas Day a year ago, Danny Bradford and Goldie were married, and I was the best man. And after the ceremony, we all drove out to call on Danny's mother, and we found her ready to welcome her new daughter with open arms. As for Tony, he's making progress slowly, and I hope someday to see him well and strong as other boys. We'll be anxiously waiting to hear your story next week, Mr. Hersholt, and I understand it will come to us from New York. Yes, Art. Mrs. Herschel and I are looking forward to spending our Christmas vacation in New York. How marvelous for you. And I understand Gloria Holden, too, trains east to spend the holidays with her mother. Well, Rosemary DeCamp and I will remain in Hollywood. And you'd better be good next week because we'll be listening. Merry Christmas, Mr. Herschel. Thank you. And a merry, merry Christmas to all our listeners. Good night. Tune in again next week to the Dr. Christian story starring Gene Herschel, who appears through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Heard tonight was my own from that certain age. Arthur Gilmore speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.